Monster Morale. Tell them morale, because it's hollow. True morale. And this is a lot bigger than you usually see them. Usually, you know, they're nothing, nothing like that. And close up view. So I was doing a close up view of a May apple. And they do got serrated edges. They're just very minor. So I'm pretty sure this will be a May apple. Coming in for the May apple. I saw the morale. Morales are spring mushrooms. I'm not seeing any more. Usually these things grow in clusters, morels. But I'm not uh, seeing any at a glance. So I'm going to fry this up. Uh, wild edibles. Uh, this is like a delicacy, delicacy mushroom right here. I'm going to fry this up with some of the wild garlics and some eggs. Got some oil, salt, pepper. Ooh. Creole Tony Shasheri's Creole seasoning. <coughs> this is about maybe six or seven of those wild garlics. It's kind of folding in half. Let me dice these up. Uh, and then I'm going to dice up the uh, morale. Uh, so I'm going to quarter it. Right now I just cut the head in half. You can see how it's hollow. The whole mushroom's hollow. Nice big pile of sticks. Uh, like two of the small branches. Two of those branches. Six of the wild garlics. So they're kind of like, they taste basically like green onions right now. Uh, one morale. Get the fire going. Got me a glove, spoon, and four eggs, two slices of cheese. And there it is, starting to sizzle. Looking good, looking good. I'll go a little longer. Get it the eggs. I put my glove back on. Beautiful tasting. Fire's dying down. Mostly cooked. Just gonna let it sit for a second. Gave it some cheese. 
of America. Put cheese on everything. Best scrambled eggs ever. These may apples have already bloomed. That's the flower. There's the flower. Uh, these look that one. Another flower. Spring wild edibles are mostly leaves, roots, not really fruits. Cement tree. Most of the trees have leafed out and these fruit trees uh, got little buds on them, uh, flowers. But the persimmon hasn't even uh, leafed out yet. This is either a plum or like a crab apple. Wild plum, wild crab apple tree. Flowering out now. More importantly, it's a pawpaw right here. Wild pawpaw. Leaves ain't, uh, you know, it's kind of like my pawpaw. They just sprouted. But those will turn into uh, big green fruits. And look at all that. That's a bunch of it's going to be a bunch of pawpaws. This is Doc. I actually got a ton of Doc seeds that I brought over from Washington. Doc was one of my favorite things for making salads out of. Doc and it's just those leaves will get real big, you know, maybe a foot long, you know. The biannual, second year, it uh, seeds out. You know, in Washington. Uh, powdery mildew was an issue. It just grew on everything, you know. So your salad greens, you know, like your lettuces and kales would just get coated with powdery mildew. But the dock didn't really get affected by it. It was kind of resilient to the powdery mildew. Which is nice, you know. Cause when it gets loaded with powdery mildew, it's no good. This is another one of the ones I like to make salads out of. This is broadleaf plantain. It's got these stringy little strings in there. Uh, leaves will get a little bit bigger. It may be a biennial. It does a little seed head. Herb Roberts type of geranium. Yeah, I'd put these in salads. These got a nice, these got a, you know a taste to them. You know, you know, you know. I guess why it's called Herb Roberts. You know, it's got a particular taste. You know, not good, not bad, but you know, its own thing. This is a poor example of it. This looks like chickweed. Chickweed's another good one for. Uh, salads. Some curly dock right here. Uh, real similar to the broadleaf dock, but it's got thinner leaves and the curly. Not so curly. Another good salad one. And I got some violets. Take off the flower heads. Broadleaf plantains. Pick off those leaves. Curly Doc, pick off those leaves, mix it all together, and you got a nice little salad. You know, the violets give it some, give the salad some color. An even better example of thin leaf plantain right here. See just how curly those leaves are. Or, 
curly dock, I mean, my bad. Got a fern, hard to say what kind of fern. Ferns aren't edible really, but they're little baby shoots. I think these are called fiddleheads. When they're little baby shoots like this, these are edible and they're supposed to be good. Like you fry them up. I've never actually eaten them, but you know, it's a popular, a kind of popular, you know, it's like dandelion, kind of a popular food. You know, people still eat it, you know, these little fern heads when they're babies. When they're like this, they've got too much. When they're big, they got too much poisons in them. But when they're little like this, they're good. Looks like a bull thistle. Uh, you wouldn't think it, but it should be edible. You know, there's really no getting around the little spikes on it. You know, but once it gets taller, you know, this will go maybe three, four feet tall. You can just, you know, have a nice you know, stem about as thick as your finger. You can just scrape the, you know, spike, you know, the thorn, the little prickies. You can just scrape that off and then steam it and eat it. It's actually really good in vitamin C. And these are my favorites right here. It's a nice big patch of them. So, yeah. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, you kind of see they got left in the ground there was one right there and one right there cloves side cloves this is some of that wild garlic right here snails uh, boil it fry it With a little bit of this uh Wild garlic. Nice little tasty treat. Snails are a good source of protein. Kind of nasty. What I like more is this. Clovers. These are actual clovers right here. Clovers are a good source of protein. And they're not snails. Nice little patch of big clovers. Probably purple clover. A nice little patch of small clovers. Never know. Maybe white clover or yellow clover. It's broadleaf plantain uh, and thin leaf plantain. I'm thinking this is, I'm pretty sure it's thin leaf plantain. Kind of, what do we got? Kind of see, it's got it looks like a lot more, but it is seven. Like one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven veins. And the thing about plantains is these little veins are pretty tough, you know. So this is, yeah, I'm thinking this is the thin leaf plantain. Cattail's not too common unless you're like in a boggy area. And, you know, this is run off from the hill, so it stays boggy. Cattle got good roots, you know. As long as there's no chemicals around, you're not in like a bog area next to a chemical plant. The roots are good. And then when they make their little flowering, you know, like hot dog head, those uh, the pollen's supposed to be really good, and then the kind of like a flower or something you know so the roots and the flowering heads are good an actual dandelion yeah they're not too common out here you know it's got a, you know pretty specific you know serrations in its leaves that other one was close but not quite dandelion's a real good one for me it's like a Supposed to be real good for your liver, you know. So all the drinking I do, 
You know, I better be putting a lot of dandelions in my salads. Uh, that's kind of why I like dandelions. And you can, so I mean, it's the, you can do the whole thing, you know, the root, the leaf, and the flowering head. Uh, maybe fry up, you know, dip that flowering head in some batter and then fry that up, make it taste good. And then have a side salad of the greens. Make a tea out of the roots. Easy peasy. Some hairy vitacress. Got the white, tiny little, I mean these are tiny, you know, tiny little white flowers and the leaves like that. And they look uh, like they're offset, like they're straight across, but they're actually offset slightly. Like this one right here is higher up on the leaf than this one. They look close, but they're offset. They're not exactly straight across. That's the wood sorrow. It's got the uh, heart shaped leaves. One thing is, it's, it's purple. Purple, because it's out here. I think it's just because it's getting too much sun. Some winter crest right here. Uh, yeah. Four petals. Uh, but not, you know, in like a you know, kind of more of like up and down. You know, this one's more like a plus sign main thing is it's got these crest leaves kind of it looks like they're you know one side the other side but they're actually slightly off kind of a common with crests different cresses there's a lot of different cresses this one's a winter crest it's uh leaves are good to eat uh in the winter but you know you really shouldn't eat them once they've gone to flower. Oh, another thing, they got ribs. This particular winter crest does. You go like this, you can feel the ribs on there. Little lines. Biggest thing is the leaves. Sorrel. The normal leaves. And this is looking like it's sh sheep sorrel. I got these little arrowhead leaves. They're tiny. Yeah. Tastes like a blackberry. It's citrusy. So these will get taller. Those are a little seed head. I'm pretty sure it's the same group, sorrel, but you know, it's definitely not heart shaped leaves. Last sorrel around here that I've seen violet sorrel. Got the nice little sorrel leaves. And violet sorrel actually comes with purple leaves. I, last one didn't have them. But it's normal that they do. Nice big patch of uh, it's either ground ivy or purple ivy. I want to say it's purple ivy. It's uh, I'm guessing it's edible. I'm not too sure. It looks real similar to uh. Purple dead nettle, same kind of like flowers, so about the same size. This is cleavers right here, edible. Uh, they got these little 
you know, grabby hairs on them so they stick to you. So they kind of cleave to you. Uh, they're supposed to be good for filtering milk to coagulate it into uh, cheese because they're high in vitamin C's. Purple dead nettle. It's kind of see the similarity of those flowers. This is the purple dead nettle right here. This one's definitely uh, definitely edible. You know, I'm I'm thinking this is edible. I'm not sure. I'm not. You know, I'm new to it. But purple dead nettle. Purple dead nettle. Some carrion. It's dead vulture. It's getting washed. You know, you always want to clean your your carrion well before you eat it. Good source of worms. Uh, fry it up with some wild garlic, some wild ginger, and you're good to go.